Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, as a volunteer for the RSPCA, I do tend to have to cram things in, so uh, hopefully I can get through this without uh, making any errors. I can't coordinate pressing the button and talking at the same time, but uh, we'll see how I go. Okay. Um, so maybe what I should do is just start off by setting the record straight um, about the recent portrayal uh, of the RSPCA in the media as an animal rights or an animal activist organisation. Actually, we're neither of those. The RSPCA is not opposed to the farming of animals for food, not opposed to the use of animals uh, for production of fibre and other products. And we have no policy that promotes or implies that vegetarianism or veganism is the solution to improving the welfare of farm animals. But we do believe that we, if, if we are to breed, rear, and slaughter animals for the purpose of food, they must be provided with an environment that meets their physical and behavioral needs without unnecessary suffering or distress. And that makes us an animal welfare organization. It's a very clear and a very important difference. All our policies are based on science, and our five freedoms for animals form a comprehensive framework for analysis of welfare. And I came clutching our policy booklet here, and it's probably in everybody's interest to have one of those. Um, it does, sets out very strongly and very clearly where the RSPCA sits on a various uh, range of positions. <clears throat> Opinions certainly vary on the extent to which animals can be used by humans. At one end, there are those that believe there is no justification at all for humans to use animals, while at the other end, there are those who believe that significant suffering and distress can be justified in the, produce of, uh, in the pursuit of productivity or profit. The RSPCA sits in the middle. We see that you can meet the needs of individual animals and at the same time sustain productive and profitable livestock industries that provide humans with food and fiber. Because we do sit in the middle, we're often criticized by one side for not doing enough to improve animal welfare, or indeed end livestock production altogether, and by the other side for wanting to do too much. Overall, we believe that our approach to improving animal welfare in Australia is pragmatic, and we like nothing better than to work with the livestock industry's forward thinkers in order to achieve systemic improvements for large, animals, large numbers of animals. So it's all about incremental change, and incremental change, in our opinion, being a little bit quicker than it is now. We know that an increasing number of people are concerned about animals and animal welfare. We are seeing a growing number of more engaged and more connected consumers. People want more information about how their food is produced, and the welfare of animals is becoming a key influencer in consumer purchasing decisions. And in fact, the RSPCA is a, a good barometer of consumer, consumer sentiment. There's certainly a link between awareness of on-farm production practices and level of concern for animal welfare. And this knowledge can change buying behavior. Retailer and fast food outlet interest in alternative farming systems is at an all-time high, and supermarkets are stocking up on higher welfare products as a direct result of consumer demand. Certainly five years ago, we'd never have seen this level of retailer engagement. And whether it's based on a genuine interest in animal welfare or simply taking advantage of a market opportunity, the result will still be the same, an improvement in conditions for many, many farm animals. And this means that for Australian livestock producers, there is an opportunity to tap into a growing market looking for that alternative value proposition. Even though the animal welfare focus has traditionally been on the more intensive livestock production systems, the obvious examples being sows in stalls in the pig industry and hens housed in battery cages for egg production, um, can consumers be satisfied that ongoing farm practices, transport and slaughter are up to scratch in the more extensive industries? This is where consumers interested in ethical food production and animal welfare are looking. And this is where the RSPCA sees an opportunity for change. 
Taking as an example beef cattle production, let's just look at some common on-farm practices, such as dehorning, castration, spaying, and hot iron branding. These procedures are traditionally performed without pain relief, but in recent years, a growing awareness of pain perception in animals has led to the research effort being focused on strategies to minimize pain or do away with the procedure altogether by in introducing polled genetics. Another opportunity for the research effort is to focus on the development of inexpensive and easily applied alternatives to control pregnancy and avoid the need for spaying altogether. Dehorning and other invasive procedures are not only painful, they are visually confronting and therefore more likely to attract the attention of the general public. Other aspects of farm animal, man animal management that influence welfare include stock person behavior and attitude and the associated level of stress experienced by the animal during handling. Pest control and the humaneness actually I probably ought to say inhumaneness of some common methods of trapping or baiting, also requires attention. An ongoing consideration should be given to non-lethal control methods. Calf and breeder mortality, particularly in the northern pastoral zone, is an area that requires ongoing management and research. And finally, I should mention the need for drought and indeed flood preparedness strategies with the frequency, as, as we've seen, um, of such events uh, on the rise. So the RSPCA is committed to working with the livestock industry to achieve continuous improvement in farm animal welfare. As mentioned, our position is founded on the acceptance of use of animals for the production of food and fiber and reflective of our long-standing views on a range of animal welfare issues in the livestock industry. And it's obviously informed by relevant animal welfare science. It should not come as a surprise that our vision for the future of beef Beef cattle production in Australia includes low stress handling, access to feed and water, shade or shelter, no electric prodders, no electro immobilization, no hot iron branding, no dehorning, husbandry procedures with pain relief, appropriate breeding management, humane killing, no live exports, and limiting transport journeys. In our view, this is not an unreasonable list of expectations, certainly when you understand that we consider the needs of the animal first and foremost, and we're an animal welfare organization, ladies and gentlemen. We recognize that more and more beef cattle producers want to demonstrate to the consumer that their farm operates to high animal welfare standards. In fact, these same producers are approaching us, are approaching us for some kind of recognition for the work that they're doing in this area. And it's in this context that the RSPCA decided to develop animal welfare guidelines for this industry over a, quite a long period of time. The RSPCA animal welfare guidelines for beef cattle build on existing industry codes and standards for livestock management on farm during transport and at slaughter. The guidelines are a reflection of RSPCA policy and focus specifically on areas of livestock management that affect animal welfare. They have been written with the best interest of beef cattle in mind, as from an animal, animal welfare perspective, that's our key concern. The guidelines then are essentially our vision for the way in which beef cattle welfare can be improved in the short to medium term, and are designed to encourage innovation and practical achievement in industry. They put a flag in the ground that marks where we are today and benchmarks where we could get to over time. So what's in it for producers? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> well, cons oh dear, <coughs> gone a little bit croaky, sorry. Well, consumers want to know what's happening on farm and increasingly are seeking higher welfare products as I mentioned earlier. Producers do want to be recognized for the good work they're doing in this area. So the RSPCA is inviting producers to participate in, a, in our beef cattle welfare challenge. Thank you. We ask producers to benchmark um, how their own current on-farm practices to a particular guideline um, and how long they think it will take to change current practice to, to meet that guideline or make a significant change and thereby improve animal welfare on farm. 
In other words, the challenge encourages producers to work towards continuous improvement. Partition participation is free and it's entirely voluntary. Producers are also eligible for a Beef Cattle Welfare Challenge Award, which recognises innovation or achievement in animal welfare management. Award winners will be publicly recognised and provided with Beef Cattle Welfare Challenge collateral to display on relevant merchandise or elsewhere as appropriate. And in short, we'll make every effort to acknowledge participants in the Beef Cattle Welfare Challenge in order to connect consumers and producers who are committed to improving animal welfare on farm. At present, there are no plans to introduce standards for beef production under the RSPCA approved farming scheme. The guidelines and associated beef cattle welfare challenge are our way of providing beef cattle producers with the opportunity to promote to a wider audience the good animal welfare work that they are doing and a way also for us um, to recognise them. So the context of the Beef Cattle Welfare Guidelines is one in which we underline our ongoing commitment to working with the livestock industry in order to achieve continuous improvement in beef cattle welfare. There is room for improvement in every sector of the livestock production process. And just like other members of the supply chain, landholders with animals in their care have a responsibility to manage a risk to their welfare. This may well require a change in long established practices. But more than anything, it is a philosophical change that recognises the value of promoting good animal welfare practice at every step of the supply chain, and one that recognises that meeting community and communi consumer expectations is more than just maintaining the status quo. So everybody, um, we all need to own animal welfare. And it's great to see with the, the previous speakers that um, animal welfare has now made it on the list of uh, key industry points that need to be attended to. Um, the public expect us to own animal welfare. It's here to stay. Thank you.